So, you're a solo player inside of Destiny 2, and you're looking to get the Exotic Bow Wishkeeper. To do that, you have to do the Star-Crossed mission, but unfortunately, the bow comes incomplete. To unlock its full functionality, you need to unlock the four intrinsic upgrades and the catalyst refits to make it a fantastic weapon. To do that, you're gonna have to knock out some quests, but most importantly, it will take you back to having to complete the legend version of the Star-Crossed mission. If you're a solo player, knocking out the normal version of the mission is pretty simple, but doing it on legend is a whole new can of worms. Your power is locked to 18, 15 power level tops, and the enemies are far, far more lethal. However, the strats I'm going to be showing you in this video are ridiculously easy. So easy that I literally watched the fugitive in the background while running this mission on my brother's account. A lot of people do know about the cheese exploit, but so many folks struggle just to get to that point in the first place. So today I'm going to be showing you how anybody can solo the star crossed mission on the legend difficulty so that you can get the exotic catalyst. And I'm going to be showing you how to do it with the cheese. And if they patch it, how to do it without. Oh hey, that reminds me of another thing that anybody can do, and that's to subscribe to the channel. That way you don't miss out on any of the gaming content that I make or the Destiny 2 strategies that I put out. Thanks and big smooch. All right, first thing, let's talk about the weapons, mods, and gear that you should be using. If you're gonna use the cheese, Wish Ender is a non-negotiable, and to be honest, it's actually a great weapon since bow damage is increased in this encounter. Next up, I use a blinding or disorienting grenade launcher of of some sort. It doesn't matter what flavor you want to use. I really prefer the Empty Vessel. It's a grenade launcher that you can get from Strikes. It comes with auto-loading holster and disorienting grenades. Very easy to get. Next up, I'm going to be using a solar weapon, a solar machine gun, and you can have your choice here. You can either use fixed odds, but I also used my Rewind Rounds target lock avalanche that I farmed during the dawning because it's a blast to use. But I use machine guns because they're generally safer than grenade launchers and rocket launchers because you can't kill yourself with explosions and there's a lot of ammo capacity. Next up, you wanna make sure that you have the ability to put Taken and Major Spec on your weapons. Most of the enemies in here are going to be Taken enemies, but there will be some Vex enemies that you'll have to take out as well. In the description box of this video, I put three different builds, one for each of the different classes, Warlock, Hunter, and Titan. With these builds, you can easily solo and flawlessly solo this mission with any of the builds below. For Titans, you're gonna use a combination of Syntheseps and Pyrogale Gauntlets, and you don't have to have the Pyrogale Gauntlets, but it is super helpful in taking care of the mini bosses. For Warlocks, using a Dawn Chorus build will work great for dealing tons of damage and staying alive while also shredding the mini bosses. And for Hunters, using the Celestial Golden Gun build to one-shot mini bosses is going to be extremely helpful. Make sure that you have two Kinetic Surges put into your boot armor. This is gonna be different than what we do for the other two classes. For all the classes, you want to make sure that you at least have one Void Damage Resist mods, and in some cases, two, and then along with that, Concussive Dampener. Since Void Damage is increased while it's incoming in this mission, it can absolutely annihilate you if you're not ready. For all the classes other than Hunter, make sure that you're running whatever surge of the weapons you're using. I'm going to recommend that you use Solar, especially since the Solar Artifact mods are really good, and of course, make sure Sure that you have a time dilation mod in your class item that way you can get a little bit more time to do extra damage while using those solar mods the last thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you have something that you can put on that has unstoppable honestly i just use either malfeasance or wish keeper itself since there is a mod in the artifact this season which allows bows to have intrinsic unstoppable all right let's break this down first thing you're going to have to do is this little bit of a jumping puzzle here what you want to do is once you get to this spot right before you jump up to the final platform this right here is a good spot to start taking out enemies it's critical that you stay in hiding during this time because if the enemies rush you, you will die instantly. There's two Vex Minotaurs over there that can nuke you with their void weapons. I'm going to blind them repeatedly and make them stop shooting. If I need to, I'm going to go to this right side over here for cover and continue to blind them. And if I need to, use my heavy weapon. The first thing you need to do in this area here, right before you open the first door, is just to take out all of these enemies. They will respawn behind you. And there's also snipers that you need to watch out for. Just take your time and don't rush. 
instead of trying to push all of these enemies here from this spot, what you can do instead is go to the far right. There is a lily pad right here that you can stand on. You have lots of cover and almost all of the enemies will be in your line of sight. Wish Ender is extremely powerful for this. Now we have our first mini boss that we have to kill and memorize his symbol, but luckily he can be blinded. Even though he's immune to damage, you can still blind him. And if you're lucky, you can actually push him off the edge. Just make sure that you get the buff before you try to damage him and the buff will be over in those lily pad pond areas. In this first area, this is where you're going to have to be a little bit more careful and take your time and pace your shots. The first thing you want to do is take care of all of the ads that are going to be spawning up. There's a bunch of snipers that can two shot you if you're not careful, but you can just sit back with Wish Ender and annihilate them. They'll actually run out to you. Once you've killed enough of them, go over to the far right side and memorize the three symbols and the order that you need to shoot them in. At this point, I go back and kind of figure out where all of the different mini bosses are and what symbols they're showing. Most importantly, there's an unstoppable champion that you're going to need to take out before you do any of this. What I do is shoot him a couple of times and he actually will rush up to you. And if you're careful, you can actually nuke him, just use trees for cover. And at that point, you don't have to worry about another unstoppable for quite some time. At this point, I start to rotate around the room and kill all of the different ads and then look for the first symbol of the boss that I need to kill. Again, I'm gonna alternate between using my blinding grenade launcher and my machine gun if you wanna use your super, but you do need to watch out because he can hit you with his shield. Even if he's blinded, it takes a second for that effect to start up. Once the first mini boss is killed, you need to watch out because a bunch of new enemies will spawn up. Most importantly, these Vex Cyclops. Now they shoot void energy and they can two shoot shot you if you're not ready for them. So the first thing I do is find where the two locations of the Vex Cyclopses are and knock them out. They will spawn randomly and also the location of the bosses will spawn randomly. In addition, there'll be some hobgoblins that you'll need to take care of, but generally this is how you're gonna repeat this process. Once you're ready, you kill one of the mini bosses. Once the mini bosses are dead, go look for the Vex Cyclopses and all of the different enemies. And you can also blind the Vex Cyclopses too if that helps you out. Now, a couple of quick notes to help out with this section. You need to have Sire's obligation to, of course, damage the mini bosses, but you also need to have Sire's obligation to see what symbol they're showing off. In addition, the bosses are very chunky. You can see that I actually use my super on this boss right here. And even though I'm using my super, he still doesn't die with Pyro Gale Gauntlets. But another cool fact is if you run out of Sire's obligation, you can actually finish the boss as long as he's got the finisher marker above him. Once you're done with that, the door will open and you can head over to this area where you get a new buff called Dam's Gift. You can go through these orange areas and not get damaged there is a timer on that. So just make sure that you don't run out of that while you're running in through those sections, which leads us to this next area. Take care of all of these enemies in this first open garden area. Repeat that process of blinding the Vex Minotaur, especially because he shoots void. Once you've done that, pick up Dam's Gift and look around the room. You're going to see three doors, one to the left, one in front, and one to the right. Here's the way to do this the easiest way possible. Basically, we need to kill three wyverns. However, the wyverns are extremely dangerous because they shoot void lances at you and they can kill you very easily. What we're gonna do is bait him into this spot here and blind him with our disorienting grenade launchers and then just finish him by taking pot shots at him. Now he can run out of that room, but it is rare that that happens. If he jumps through that, he can chase you. So just be careful. Unlock the first part of the barrier, then head to the left and you'll find a bunch of normal enemies and some Vex Minotaurs. Just take them out with pot shots with your wish ender and take care of this hobgoblin up on the top. Now memorize where those enemies were coming from because you're going to have to remember that spot for later. Once we go up the stairs, we're going to bait out the boss here in this section, the wyvern and a bunch of the enemies and get them to chase us. The wyvern should not go through that orange dam's gift area and you can just take pot shots at all the enemies. Now, this is why it's important to make sure that you remember where those enemies were coming from before. They will respawn periodically as you're going into this section. So you should always be watching and knocking out these enemies as they spawn up. An easy way to do that is stay up where this hobgoblin was and just take pot shots at the boss. Once you've cleared those enemies again, take some more shots at the Wyvern. If you've got your Pyrogel Gauntlets, you can knock out the boss again very easily. Just always be careful to make sure that you're staying alive. Refresh your dam's gift 
and then unlock the second barrier. You're then gonna head over to the right hand side. You're not gonna go forward, you're gonna head to the right. This is gonna be the easiest way to deal this. You're gonna see a little bit of a jumping puzzle, not too much, but the nice thing about this is that all of these enemies are at a distance and you can take them out very easily with your wish ender or your machine gun. Do be careful as you're jumping across because there are some moving platforms. You don't need to pick up dams gifts for this area and this is actually one of the more easier ways we can kill the wyvern. There's gonna be a rotating platform over here to the right. You need to knock out the wyvern from a distance. The great thing is you have lots of natural cover. The bad thing is there's a ton of enemies here. So we're just gonna take pot shots at the wyvern and then take out the enemies as we see fit. You obviously don't wanna get bogarted by all of those minotaurs. So I generally kill them and then move on to doing damage to the wyvern. An important fact though, is that if you don't kill the enemies, sometimes they will spawn back on that platform behind. Now, usually for me, I only saw Vex goblins, but I know that Minotaurs can actually spawn over there as well. There's a couple of those void lances that you want to avoid, but once you've killed the wyvern, which should not take you very long, you can unlock the third and final portion and then head to your right through that door. This will take you back to the main gate area, and this part is insanely easy. It does take a little time to do, so just be patient and here's all you gotta do. Take out all of the enemies here, especially the snipers that can easily knock you out if you're not ready for it. And then there will be two major bosses that will spawn in. Before you push up, make sure that you kill these snipers that are above the portal that you ran by. If you use this strategy and knock them out, the rest of this fight is gonna be insanely easy. Just make sure you knock them out, look for any heavy that you can find on the ground, and then look at where this tree and column are. There's gonna be a giant Vex Minotaur that's gonna spawn up as well as a bunch of other enemies, and most importantly, a wyvern. If you do not push any farther than this area, they will not push you. A couple of the goblins might come up the stairs, but the great part about this is you can just sit back from a distance and just take pot shots. I generally make sure that I take care of the wyvern first. Again, the boss and the wyvern together will do insane damage if you're not in cover. But with this strategy, you can just take pot shots at them. It doesn't take any time or effort. If you feel comfortable, you can definitely pop your super and do some damage, but generally just stay back at a distance and when you're ready, shred the final boss and then move into a very easy jumping puzzle. Now I use whatever exotics help out with jumping puzzles like Lion Rampants if I'm on a Titan or Stompies if I'm on a Hunter. Use whatever you feel comfortable with, but the big thing here is just make sure that you move in time with all of these different moving platforms because you can fall into the gap if you're not ready for it. Just follow the path that you see here on screen and knock out the Minotaurs on this road here as you get to the final location. Do be careful because they do spawn up and hide a little bit, especially with the Vex Minotaurs. You want to take them out and be safe. This next part is probably one of the most dangerous sections of this mission. There's going to be a bunch of taken enemies that are going to be shooting a ton of void at you, and that's void lances as well as those void axion darts. If you get hit by two of them, you will die. So generally what I do is go back over to this platform and wait for a couple of the Axian darts to come and hit me. I wait to get my life back. I get my blinding grenade launcher and my ammo all ready to go. And also I'm waiting for my super because that will help me deal with a lot of these enemies. Do not stay in that little spot over to the right hand side. Instead, go back and forth to that platform until you get your super and knock out all of these Vex enemies and then you'll be good to go to the next section. There's going to be a bunch of void snipers and some minotaurs that are going to be in the next section. So just take your time, knock them out from a distance and then head over to this platform here. Jump up onto this platform right before the next area where you need Need to kill three more of these bosses. The great thing about this platform is that this offers perfect cover and then we can take care of the final unstoppable that exists in the legend version of this. So I'm just going to switch to my wish keeper, knock out the unstoppable and then do as much damage as I can with my machine gun. And then once he's down, switch to wish ender and then take care of the rest of the ads and then get ready for the next section. Just like the previous section, we have to look up and down, read from the top to the bottom and unlock the 
seals by killing the enemies. To do that, you can't just have Dam's Gift or Sire's Obligation. You need to have both of the two buffs to get a buff called Crowned with Dragons. That will allow you to do damage to the mini bosses. The nice thing about Crowned with Dragons is that to re-up the timer, all you have to do is to step into one of those two buffs and it will re-up the timer. Now, as you go into different sections here, you do need to watch out because there will be Taken Phalanxes shooting Axion darts at you. If you go to any of the two sides, you want to make sure that you're always rebuffing yourself with Crown with Dragons. If you clear one of those two sides, I generally try to run all the way back here to the steps because there will be enemies with Axion darts that will sometimes spawn in the middle. There will also be a wizard that will spawn up in the third and final room. You can see this Axion dart is coming from me. It will do insane damage if I'm not ready for it. So I'm just going to stay back and clear all of those enemies in the middle. Again, these are going to be randomized depending on the order that you need to open the door. Now, this is a great example of just taking my time and being patient. These enemies will respawn, but the taken phalanxes will not. So you want to take them out at your leisure, making sure that you don't die. And if at any point you think an Axion dart is going to get close to you, either knock it out with a machine gun or just run out of the area, refresh your buff, and then go back in when you're safe. Just to repeat, the adds will respawn, but the enemies like the wizards and the taken phalanxes will not respawn. So once you knock them out, you're kind of safe to actually go after the different bosses. When you have all three of the mini bosses taken care of, it's time for some boss cheese. Now, everybody knows about this, or at least many people in the Destiny community know about this. Using Wish Ender, you can basically just shoot through this door here. If you're standing in this location, you can have your gun go through the shield and you can do damage to the boss. I generally think if you want to be safe, just use your wish ender and sit in the back, refresh your buff, because you do need to have the buff crowned with dragons to do damage to the boss. This is a slow, tedious process, but if you do this, you will be 100% safe. All you have to do is go back, refresh your buffs, and do damage when you can. Now, in the boss room, there's two enemies that we're going to need to deal with if we're doing the cheese method. The first thing is these taken goblins. You'll notice that they are immune and that you actually have to take out the Taken Goblins that are shielding the boss. Luckily, this is pretty easy to do. In addition, there's going to be some homing Vex that can actually sometimes get through this door here. You can push up and be a little bit more aggressive, but you do need to be careful because these enemies can also shoot through that shield. The best thing I would say to do is just take your time, sit in the back, and take care of the boss from a distance using Wish Ender. If you see any of the goblins start to shield them, you can either blind them with your disorienting grenade launcher, take them out with Wish Ender, and if you see a bunch of them chained together, just find the start of it, and then just start to take them out one by one. You can one-shot them with Wish Ender, which is really, really nice. Now, let's say that Bungie patches the Wish Ender cheese. What you're going to do is get the buffs that are at the bottom of the area here come to this rock to this right side and you're just gonna live over here on this right side you're gonna kite the boss left to right and then also make sure that you take care of any of the enemies that might be chasing you there's gonna be a mini boss over to the right hand side that you're gonna take care of and once you take care of him it's gonna be really really safe for you to go over to the right side and refresh the buffs there's also some buffs here at the entrance that you can go to but it's very very dangerous if you do that but basically you just stay at this rock here, wither hoard the boss, and you're good to go. You can just take your time and knock out the boss at your leisure. But honestly, I'd just say use the wish ender method. It's much easier to do if for some reason they patch it. You have a strategy that you can easily use. The biggest thing is just to stay patient, take pot shots at the boss when you're free, and with that, you can easily GG this boss and the star crossed mission on legend. Like I said, this is so easy that I did this on my brother's account when making this video while I was visiting him for the holidays. If you only want to do this once and get all four of the catalysts, just make sure that you do all of the quest lines that you need for each one of the catalyst retrofits, like for example, Constellation Lock. This is also a great way to farm any of the undying weapons. And with that, we've shown you how Eddie Bitty can solo flawless the legend version of the Starcrossed mission for the exotic bow. If you are needing help, come on over to twitch.tv slash manodestra. You can also ask questions in the comment section down below. Good hunting, Guardians. See you next time in the universe of destiny.